Hello there, escapers. My name is Xenovilius, and welcome to part two, I suppose, part two of my Hex Hunter bow video. I was planning to make this as part of part one, so just one video, but there's just so much to cover. And uh, just a quick recap in part one, I covered all the numbers to do with the Hex Hunter, comparing it with the tier 90 and tier 92 bows without looking at any specific scenario. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to look at where we can use this bow or its special effect applies and how good it is at the different bosses, both from a practical point of view and also a statistical point of view. So just a quick recap. If if you didn't know, the Hex Hunter bow was released into the game almost two weeks ago now with the Soul Gazer update and it is a tier 80 bow but it gives a 10% damage to monsters that are able to drop the magic golden rock and I'm denoting that with the symbol you see on screen. The second effect which is very minuscule and unnoticeable for reasons we will be going into in this video is that it's got an invisible affinity bonus to enemies that are weak to arrows. It's kind of useless because if an enemy is weak to arrows your affinity is very very high on that enemy anyway. It's 90 so there's not much point but we'll have a look at it anyway. So for the first effect these are a number of the different bosses and slayer monsters that the bow works on. As you can see there are a huge range of bosses. A notable few exceptions here are things like Nex and AOD. They do not count. Varaka doesn't count either. Telos doesn't count either which sucks a little bit I suppose but there's a lot going for the bow regardless of that. As for slayer monsters, any slayer monster that attacks you with mage really is able to be affected by this bow. Some of them are shown on screen now. For the second effect which is pretty much useless like I said out of the ones you saw earlier only these are affected but let's move on quick summary of the stats then so basically with the mage hex on bow, there are three different scenarios like I mentioned in my previous video whenever you're fighting a monster that is so tanky that your hit chances never reach 100% number two is when you try to get it to 100% so you use different boosts and that's what we're going to be doing in this video as well at different bosses and in stage three you've got it easy hit chances are all above 100% you're fighting something with very low defense or you're in a group that's using boosts in order to lower the defense and increase your hit chance on whatever you're fighting. So in scenario one there is absolutely no question that the bow is far outclassed by the tier 90 and tier 92 bows. So what I've done here is that I'm comparing a normal tier 80 bow without any hex hunter or any other sort of effects and looking at how much extra DPS each of the three different bows adds. The Mage Hex Hunter, the Tier 90 and the Tier 92 bow. As you can see the Saren God bow is 25.81% more DPS than a tier 80 bow and the mage hex center is only 10% more DPS so yeah no question about that if you're fighting a very very tanky monster where even with a seren god bow and the boosts you can see on screen you won't reach 100% hit chance then there's no question that the seren god bow is the way to go in part two however if you assume that you're fighting a monster and you somehow just about have 100% hit chance with a seren god bow what you see is that the damage the damage rating of the Mage Hex Hunter is higher than the damage rating of tier 90 and tier 92 bows. However, if the hit chance is lower than 100%, then these two effects cancel out and the DPS doesn't match up. What you need to do in order to get the DPS to match up is to get the hit chances to the following. So if you want the DPS of the Mage Hex Hunter to match up the DPS of a Nox Longbow, you need the Mage Hex Hunter's DPS to be 97.5%. So you need to increase it by 8.9%. And if you want to match it up with the Saren God Bow's DPS, you need to get it to 98.82%. This is actually a very important number because it applies to pretty much every single scenario out there. 98.82% hit chance. If you get that, it means your Mage Hex Hunter outclasses your Saren God Bow at the monsters that are affected, like I showed you. In the third case, when all your hit chances are well above 100%, because the Mage Hex Hunter has a better damage rating and hit chances above 100% don't mean anything, this is the DPS difference you get. So the Mage Hex Hunter outclasses both tier 90 and tier 92 bows by the percentages you see on screen effectively making it a tier 93.8 bow pretty impressive to be honest tier 93.8 in terms of damage that is pretty impressive not gonna lie and you get it to this point by using a bunch of hit chance boosts for example if someone in your team is using affinity boosts like 
because of Guthix and Statius Warhammer, or if you're using, say, an Accuracy Aura or a Nihil or a Reaper Necklace, things like that will improve your hit chance and get your hit chance to 100% even with a tier 80 bow. It is extremely important to note that the reason you can get the damage rating of the Hex Hunter bow to be greater than the damage rating of the Saren God bow is because of the various equipment ability damage boosts that you get. The highest possible, I believe, is 235 plus 235 using the boosts you've seen on screen. So Amulet of Souls, Ring of Death, Flare Frost Boots, Ascension Grips, Full Ceranic, Illuminated God Book and a Comp Cape. Using those you will get that highest number of boosts which will therefore give you the highest difference in damage rating between the Mage Hex Hunter and the Saren God Bow. Now using these assumptions and from previous videos I've done in this series where I've looked at for example Supreme Accuracy Aura versus Berserker Aura and tier 99 prayers versus tier 92 weapons. These are the stats I've accumulated and this is actually the most important part of this video because this will act as a reference point for you to springboard off off in order to work out what kind of things you need in order to achieve 100% hit chance at different bosses. Especially at bosses which are tanky and you don't have 100% hit chance with a tier 80 bow unless you use multiple different boosts. And all these numbers you see on screen are independent. I haven't combined any of them, I've just looked at them in isolation. As you can see the Reckless Aura is by far the best aura for total DPS increase but the thing we are most interested in is accuracy. You want to increase your accuracy by just enough to get it to 100% with a tier 80 bow such as the Hex Hunter bow. Remember the Hex Hunter only boosts damage with its special ability not accuracy so you need to get your accuracy as high as possible. 98.8% is the magical mark for it to become best in slot but 100% would be nice as well for it to become the best it can be. A few notable ones to mention are that the Nihil boosts your accuracy by 5%. The Reaper Necklace works a little differently. It boosts your hit chance by 3%, i.e. it doesn't care what your original hit chance is. It will always increase it by 3. For example, 50 will go to 53, 97 will go to 100. And in this calculation of 3.09%, I've assumed that you started out at 97% hit chance and the Reaper Necklace got it up to 100%. Therefore, that's a 3.09% increase as a proportion, but as a flat percentage, that's 3% increase. And of course, you have the other boosts, such as the Corrupted Slayer Helmet, which gives a huge total DPS increase, especially your accuracy increase, but only if you're on a Slayer task, of course, and other things like the Salve Amulet and so on. The first place I went to test it out was Yakamaru, probably the most high-profile boss where this effect actually works. So the funny thing was that my team decided to use a challenge gem to see who would win in the DPS race within Yakamaru and it was pretty fun, I must admit. I tried literally everything I could to try and be number one. But in the end, I fell short by just 566k damage versus 541k damage. The person who came first to my second was none other than Wildman who was using dual Kopeshes. So he had a kind of an advantage, although he didn't have the tier 99 prayers, I did. And they started as soon as I jumped down. That wasn't fair guys, that was not fair, that was not fun. But uh, all in all, the Hex Hunter bow in terms of practicality is actually pretty good. I mean, if you take away the fact that melee is the best DPS style, mage is probably even better if you use Fortic auto attacking. I don't know how long for, but it's still there in the game. So as long as you use it, you will probably get the best DPS in the game. But if we're just looking at range and we distance ourselves away from those two superior styles, then there is no question that that Hex Hunter is very practical and very good here. The only downside I might add is it's lower ranged, although that's not really a problem at Yakamaru. Apart from that, it performed everything smoothly, perform like any other two-handed bow would. And I didn't have the best perks. I only had P5 E3. I didn't have P4 E2 and Aftershock 3. So my DPS overall was lower. But if I got those perks and I compared it with, say, my Saren God bow and Noxious Longbow, which also had 
have the exact same perks, then the DPS differences would not change one little bit. But let's have a look at what the numbers say because that's what we're here for. And a massive thank you as ever has to go to Chipapa for his hit chance calculator, which I used to calculate my hit chances in all subsequent parts of this video. So I'd highly, highly recommend checking that out. He's put in a lot of time and effort to incorporate every single possible thing that could affect hit chance. And that's in the description for you guys to have a look at. So if you don't have someone hammering or using any sort of affinity boosts in your Yakamaru fight, you are really struggling, guys. You are absolutely struggling. And kills will take a very, very long if that's the case. So in this analysis, as with my previous video, I have looked at the base case as being a tier 80 weapon and compared the three other cases with it. So the three other cases are the Mage Hex Hunter, i.e. the Hex Hunter bow on targets that that its effect actually works at the tier 90 bow i.e nox bow or ascensions and the seren god bow or the tier 92 solak crossbows when they get released and as you can see without any affinity boost your hit chances are pretty pathetic and as a result your hex center bow stands no chance whatsoever the seren god bow is 25.8 percent more dps than a tier 80 bow the mage hex center is only 10 percent more dps because of its effect and because your accuracy is well 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 below 100 percent there is no chance of the hex and bow being anywhere near as good. However, having said that, if someone decides to use a hammer, you have few things going for them. You will easily be able to get 100% hit chance if you're using a tier 90 or tier 92 bow because Yaka is one of the few bosses where the hammer's 30% defense drain ability actually lasts the entire pool and doesn't get wiped away in a few seconds. So that compounded with the fact that the hammer gives a plus 5 affinity, Quake gives plus 2, and Claws of Gothics give plus to as well means that your hit chances go much much higher and compound that with the fact that anything above 100% hit chance doesn't actually mean anything now the differences actually become a lot narrower 19.62 for the Seren God Bow versus 10% for the Mage Hex Hunter Bow of course because the accuracy isn't going to increase the only effect is that its damage increases by 10% so what we need to do as discussed is to get our hit chance rating for the Mage Hex Hunter Bow up to the magical figure of 98.8% that's our goal and we need to increase that by 8% basically 8%. We can do that a few ways. The easiest way is probably to use the Reckless Aura, but you could also use a Nihil and a Reaper Necklace to do that, although it wouldn't quite get it to 98.8, it'll be slightly less. But using the Reckless Aura, we can easily get our tier 80 bow's hit chance up to 100%. Once we do this, there is absolutely no question that the Mage Hex Center is the highest DPS. So the conclusion is, at Yakamaru, as long as you have someone using Statius Warhammer, Quake, and Claws of Guthics, you will be able to out DPS the tier 90 and tier 92 ranged weapons if you get your hit chance up another 8%. The easiest way to do this, like I said, is to use the Reckless Aura if you can, especially for raids because it's quite short and 30 minutes of the Reckless Aura is plenty. But remember that the Hex Hunter Burst special effect does not work at Beastmaster, it only works at Yakamaru. So you might want to bring your tier 90 or tier 90 to bow to Beastmaster and switch out for Yakamaru, which is exactly what I did. I was really annoyed about the fact that I didn't overhaul my friend in terms of DPS at Yakamaru, but uh, I got pretty close, guys, so no complaints there, no complaints whatsoever. Second place we're going to have a look at is Rot. Now, in Rot, the only monster where this bow special effect actually works is Ahrim, of course. And in terms of practicality, it is not practical to bring the Mage Hex of the bow here at all, not one bit, for two reasons. Firstly, you're going to have to switch to it only when you're attacking Ahrim and use different weapons for the others. People normally use Chin Chompers to kill these guys very quickly, so there's no real need for the Hex Hunter. The second is that your hit chance is very, very low, even with some of the best boosts you can get. So a lot of ROTS teams, especially teams that do fast speed kills, very fast speed kills, tend to use the Berserk Blood Essence and the normal Supreme Potions in order to get the best DPS out in the 20 seconds that it lasts. One thing to note is that the Reckless Aura does not stack with the Berserk Blood Essence. Therefore, you cannot increase your hit chance any more than what you see on screen here. 86.62 is pretty much the highest hit chance you can get with the Mage Hex Hunter Bow. Therefore, it stands no chance. There is no point bringing this to Rots. The higher tier weapons are better in every possible way. But as I said, you probably wouldn't be bringing any of these. You'll probably be bringing Chin Chompers or Magic 
because those are much better ways to kill these guys, potentially even melee. But uh, there it is, as you can see. Even though the damage rating is higher, because your hit chance is so much lower, you don't stand a chance. Now, Magister is a very interesting boss because, firstly, I didn't think the effect of the Major Hex Hunter would work there, but I'm pretty sure it does because he does use magic, and I'm pretty sure he does drop the magic golden rock. Therefore, if he does, then uh, the Major Hex Hunter is a very viable contender. But first, we gotta look at the numbers. What do the numbers say? The numbers say that your hit chance in normal circumstances, i.e., the ones you see on the top left, are pathetic. <laughs> they are laughable for the mage hex hunter bow. I mean, given that most people use magic here, there isn't much point using ranged in the first place, but if you do decide to use ranged, as you can see, your hit chance is only 80% with your mage hex hunter bow and all these boosts. So you don't stand a chance whatsoever. Even if you use a reckless aura, because the slayer helmet boost does not work here because of the corruption effect, which only boosts your damage, not your accuracy, even with all the boosts, your hit chance will only be 93.89% with the mage hex hunter bow. Nowhere near the magical figure of 98.8 that you need to get it to in order for it to overhaul the DPS of the best in slot item, which is a tier 92 Seren god bow. Therefore, nope, I would not use the mage hex hunter bow here, even though its effect works here, because your hit chance at the best of times will not go past about 94%. But as a bow, I thought it was pretty good. In the kills where I got lucky with my thresholds not missing, it worked a treat. It worked really well, really smooth kills. And because you don't need the long range of the Noxious Longbow, that doesn't really come into the argument as such. And the kills were pretty smooth, just a little bit long, but uh, all in all, I was very happy with it. Next, we went to Calfat King, me and Wildman. And Calfat King is a very interesting monster because of the fact that it is weak to arrows in its mage phase. And because it's weak to arrows, the second effect of the mage hex hunter bow applies, i.e. the effect that increases your accuracy by giving you an invisible affinity boost against monsters which are weak to arrows. But with the best of boosts, your hit chance with the mage hex hunter bow is already pretty much 100%, 99.9%. 94%. So this is why I say the second effect of the Mage Hex Hunter Bow, the affinity boost effect for monsters weak to arrows, is pretty much useless because you're already at 100%. You don't really need the affinity boosts. When you do need the affinity boosts is when you are at a boss which is not weak to arrows, therefore your hit chance is already pretty low. That's when you could do with any accuracy boost you could get. And unfortunately, I think Jagits have missed a trick here. I hope they do change it in the future. Anyway, the point is that the Mage Hex Hunter Bow is a very, very good bow for Magic Calfight King provided you're on a task. If you're on a task and you have a Corrupted Slayer Helmet, you can get your hit chance above the 98.8% magical figure. And therefore, as you can see, the total DPS far outweighs the total DPS of a Seren God Bow. I say far, but outweighs it by 1.22%. However, if you're not on a Slayer task, you're struggling. You wouldn't really be taking a Reckless Aura or a Supreme Accuracy Aura. You wouldn't be taking a Shadow Nihil because you have the other two phases, the melee and the range phase of KK to worry about. So you'd probably be focusing on those. Therefore, your highest hit chance you can get with only the Overload and 235 ability damage from miscellaneous items. Again, it's probably not even going to be 235. It's probably going to be less. But anyway, the point is, unless you're on a Slayer task, I would not take the Mage Hex Hunter Bow to Calfight King because it doesn't stand a chance against the tier 90 and tier 92 bows. The one thing in terms of practical point of view that is lacking with the Mage Hex Hunter Bow is the range. Obviously, it's only got a range of 7, the same as a Seren God Bow. The Noxious Longbow has a range of 9, which is much more useful at Calfight King because it allows allows you to avoid bombs and things. So from that point of view, no, the Mage Hex Hunter is not worth it. But if you're on a Slayer task, feel free. Go ahead and use a Mage Hex Hunter. You will get better DPS. Next, we have Legios. This is another boss where its defense against ranged is so low that even with a tier 80 weapon, you're going to be able to get 100% hit chance. And it's also a boss which I'm going to have to camp a lot. And in terms of my personal progress towards Insane Final Boss, I need three more Legio pets. So I'm looking to get these done as quickly as possible. And the good thing is that the Mage Hex Hunter is the best possible option for this as of now. Because with just an overload, your hit chance is well above 100%, 101.82%, even with a tier 80 weapon. Therefore, as a result, that means accuracy doesn't come into the picture. The only thing that matters is the differences in damage rating between the Mage Hex Hunter and its counterparts. As you can see, that's easily achievable with plus 235 
35 ability damage that you get with the best in slot items and in fact I'm going to talk about this at the end of the video but you can even get the damage rating of the mage hex hunter to be greater than the damage rating of the Saren god bow with as low an ability damage boost from other items at 60 so as long as your other items give you a plus 60 boost you'll be fine I'll analyze that later but uh, that's pretty interesting you don't need plus 235 plus 235 simply widens the gap even further to a maximum but you only need 60 but anyway the damage differences mean that the mage hex hunter is better than any of the counterparts and it's easily the best bow to use here in terms of practical aspects well legis is a boss where the closer you are to the boss the more damage you do so the range doesn't really matter and uh, pretty much everything is going for the mage hex hunter bow at this boss so no question in my book that the mage hex hunter is to be used here and in fact is one of the best bosses for it to be used next we have dagonoth prime now dagonoth prime is the other boss there are only two bosses that i can think of that are weak to arrows the first was kalthai king's mage face the second one is dagonoth prime now dagonoth prime has such a low defense against range that it doesn't really matter what bow you use i believe you could use a bow as low as level 60 or something even lower and they still have a pretty high hit chance but with just an overload boost you can get your hit chance to a ridiculous 169.65% which means yep the mage hex hunter is absolutely the best bow to use here however if say you are only wanting to kill prime say you've got the other two pets and you're only wanting to camp prime for the pet this is incidentally what i did for like the last 10 hours of my dk's pet hunt where i only needed the rex pet so i was only killing him if you're in such a situation you need to have as long a range as possible from prime so that the other two kings don't actually aggro on you and because the range is only seven this creates a bit of a problem but that's such a specific scenario and 99.9% .9 of people would never be in that scenario so there's not much point talking about it but the point is yes mage hex hunter is the best item here with literally no boosts required so take it if you're going to camp dagonoth prime next we have araxel so after the humiliation of yakamaru where i came second in the challenge gem competition i decided to buy my own challenge gems and put one in there and i'm glad to say i was number one by a massive margin and my friend who humiliated me in the previous competition well i wouldn't say humiliated but um beat me in the previous competition at Yakamaru came second here so uh, I was very happy with that but that doesn't mean a lot because it's not like we're doing the exact same ability rotations here or anything in fact it was a meme kill as most kills usually are with me because we were stuck on the middle path phase two for so long trying to get Araxor to degrade the ramp so that we could move on to phase three we were so close to dying several times as well but anyway let's have a look at the numbers and what the numbers tell us is that with the best possible boosts we can get a very very close to that magical figure of 98.8 percent hit chance but we can't quite overhaul it so that means unfortunately that the mage hex hunter bow falls slightly short in terms of dps compared to its tier 90 and tier 92 counterparts therefore i would not recommend it here but it ran it pretty close i mean with a nihil a reaper necklace and a reckless aura you get pretty close so i wouldn't be too disheartened you could still bring this bow you will only lose out on a very small amount of dps compared to its tier 90 and tier 92 counterparts provided you have the boosts you see on the top left of your screen however at araxi it's a very different story at araxi you only need a reaper necklace and a supreme accuracy aura you don't need reckless you don't need nihil and you already have 99.78 percent which is above the magical figure of 98.8 percent araxi has a much lower defense and araxi is classified as a magical monster for this purpose regardless of which style you used in the main fight so you could potentially bring the mage hex hunter bow to phase 4 Araxi as a switch and bring say ascensions or Saren God Bow or something for the main fight if you're determined to use ranged alternatively you could also bring the mage hex hunter to the fight if you have the best possible hit chance boosts and your dps will only suffer a little bit not much but the point is that at araxi it is a great bow to use it is the best ranged bow to use at araxi and therefore i would highly recommend bringing it if you're determined to range however i can tell that people wouldn't really bring it as a switch it's just a waste of time 
for a 1% DPS difference if you already have a Seren God Bow and a 2.5% if you already have a tier 90 bow. But I think it's pretty cool that the Mage Hexhunter bow has the ability to beat the other two bows in terms of DPS without actually going overboard with the hit chance boost required. Okay, for the last case, I'm going to look at Slayer. This is a very big application of the Mage Hexhunter bow and there are a number of Slayer monsters where this bow's special effect applies like you saw on screen earlier. The one I'm going to be looking at specifically in this case is the Imperial Mage Ack in the Sophonim Slayer dungeon. Now with most Slayer gear you have an ability damage in the 150s, 160s, 170s. I'm going to assume 167 here. I'm going to assume you have a corrupted Slayer helmet and overloads and nothing more than that. If you assume those things you have a hit chance that is far far above 100% so obviously because the only thing that comes into the equation is damage. Your damage rating is better than the Saren God was damage rating. Note that the DPS difference, 10% versus 9.18%, is not as high as you might have expected. That's because, of course, that this difference depends on your equipment bonuses. Because you're only wearing equipment that gives you a plus 167 bonus, not a plus 235. This difference is lower. The minimum figure, like I said, is 60 for it to be equal. The maximum possible is 235. So 167 still means you have a better DPS. It's not just that Imperial Mage acts, it's that all Slayer. Because at pretty much every single Magical Slayer monster I can think of, with ranged, your hit chance is well above 100%. Well above 100%. Therefore, the Mage Hexhunter is a great Slayer bow at those specific monsters. A lot of people use the Amulet of Zealots along with either the tier 70 normal prayers or the tier 76 and 77 leech range strength and leech range curses. Without actually going into how the Amulet of Zealots works, all I'm going to say is that if you have 100% hit chance at something, the Amulet of Zealots will give you a higher damage rating than if you used, say, tier 95 or tier 99 curses without the Amulet of Zealots. So it's a great amulet to use at Slayer. However, because it has no equipment boosts whatsoever, you're going to have to replace your Amulet of Souls, which gives a plus 46 equipment bonus with this, which gives zero. So that's going to affect the damage difference between the Mage Hexhunter and the Seren Godbow for the reasons I mentioned. But this still means you're well above the 60 mark, which is required for them to be equal. And therefore, your total damage rating 10% versus 9.63% is still higher. And therefore, it's still better to use the Mage Hex on the bow. But not by much. Not by much. And your hit chance drops a bit as well because you're using tier 77 curses. But all this has been factored in this. So the result of all that analysis is that at bosses where you can easily get 100% hit chance, the Mage Hex on the bow is easily the best bow to use in terms of DPS because of its superior damage rating, provided you have at least a plus 60 equipment bonus. And these are the monsters that applies to. Not an exhaustive list, as especially Slayer, but it's a pretty good list. At these particular monsters, you can force your hit chance to be 100% if you use all the best boosts that I mentioned earlier. And you might want to buy the Mage Hex Hunter bow for these bosses if you're willing to use those boosts when you're killing these bosses. And these two bosses are impossible to get your hit chance high enough at with the Mage Hex Hunter bow. Therefore, it's not worth buying the Mage Hex Hunter bow if you're going to be fighting these bosses. You probably wouldn't even use ranged here, let alone the Mage Hex Hunter bow. So quickly, answering a couple of your questions, from the previous video. Benjamin asked about why the fact that if you add these equipment bonuses, the Mage Hexhunter's damage rating is superior to the Seren God Bows. Well, it's pretty simple. It's because the Mage Hexhunter Bow will multiply whatever equipment bonus you get by 1.1, which the Seren God Bow and the Noxious Longbow won't do. So the formula to turn equipment bonus into ability damage increase is to multiply it by 1.5 and the Mage Hexhunter further multiplies it by 1.1. Therefore, that's the reason it becomes the best in slot for damage because of these equipment bonuses and these equipment bonuses are the ones you see on screen here like I mentioned earlier and as I said before if you do the maths the minimum equipment bonus you need with all the boosts that I mentioned is plus 60. It's plus 55 if you have tier 99 curses but it's around that mark between 55 and 60 depending on what boosts you have and at plus 60 your damage rating will be exactly equal. The second question is that Vin asked in order to out DPS the tier 92 you manipulate Manipulated accuracy, and this sacrifices the use of Soul Amis and Titans in similarly mentioned PVM scenarios. That is a very valid question. I did indeed 
manipulate the accuracy ratings. The Titan versus Nihil conversation is for a separate video in itself. In terms of practicality, yes, if you need a lot of healing, the Amulet of Souls is absolutely better than the Reaper Necklace. But if you only care about DPS, you can see that even though the Reaper Necklace has a plus 36 equipment bonus versus the Amulet of Souls plus 46, this does not outweigh its damage rating with the Mage Hex Hunter. So the two important ones to compare it with are the Mage Hex Hunter with the Reaper Necklace versus the Saren God Bow with the Amulet of Souls. And as you can see, the damage rating, despite this combination, despite what you just mentioned, is still higher by 10. Not by much, but by 10. So what that means is that if you definitely need the Reaper Necklace to get your 100% hit chance, then it's definitely worth bringing, even though it impacts your damage rating by a very small amount. So to summarize then, as I said, this is the reference point, the most important screen you would probably want to refer to when you're calculating what kind of boosts you need to get your hit chance up. I've just shown them again, and uh, the Reckless Aura is by far the best aura to use for both accuracy and damage. Closely followed by the Supreme Accuracy Aura. And also don't forget the Corrupted Slayer Helmet if you're on a Slayer task. And things like the Salve Amulet if you're fighting the undead and so on. I'd quickly like to draw your attention to three of these numbers. The first one is that the figure of 5.12% damage increase for the Reckless Aura is based on the fact that you do two thirds of all your DPS while you're in Death Swiftness and one third outside of it. When you're out of Death Swiftness, you get a bigger damage bonus than when you're in it because of the way the reckless aura works so if you average all that out you get that number that was mentioned in my berserker aura versus supreme accuracy aura video the second number i'd like to draw your attention to is the negative damage rating of the reaper necklace i didn't show this at the start of the video because i didn't want to confuse you but this is because the reaper necklace has a plus 36 equipment bonus this amulet of souls has a plus 46 so obviously that reduces the dps a little bit despite increasing your hit chance by three percent an increase of hit chance by a flat 3% between 97 and 100 means a proportional increase of 3.09%. And the Reaper Necklace, of course, increases your hit chance by 3% no matter what your original hit chance. So it would increase it from 10 to 13, 50 to 53, 97 to 100, whatever it is. And finally, even though the actual damage increase of the Corrupted Slayer Helmet is plus 14.5%, because the Slayer Helmet actually doesn't have any equipment boosts and... The comparison, which is a Cyrenic Mask, has a plus 23 boost. you got to factor that difference in, and uh, therefore it drops from plus 14.5% to plus 11.64%. Remember, all these comparisons are done based on a plus 235 ability damage boost. So you got to look at that as the base case. Another interesting thing is that when you're using Onslaught or any ultimate ability that directly damages your opponent, you have a flat 25% hit chance increase, which will automatically make your Mage Hex Center's hit chance to 100% at any boss, really. Well, most bosses. And with the boost you see on screen and a plus 60 equipment bonus, at least, it means you have the best damage rating possible when using Onslaught with the Mage Hex Hunter bow. Not just with ranged, but if you look at all the weapons for all the attack styles, the Mage Hex Hunter bow has the highest possible damage rating if you're using Onslaught, for example. Given you probably won't bring the Mage Hex Hunter bow just to use Onslaught, but it's there for you to have a look at nevertheless. And I think it's pretty interesting to see that the Mage Hex Hunter bow has such a specific thing going for it. So just to round off the video, I'm going to look at a couple of the proposed buffs that they mentioned that they might do. They didn't actually mention, players mentioned it, but they could potentially do it. So instead of plus 10% damage boost, if the Mage Hex Hunter Bow gave a plus 12.5% damage boost, then looking back at the scenario where you're looking at what the minimum hit chance is in order for the Mage Hex Hunter to become the best in slot item, you can see the requirement has dropped. It's no longer 98.8%, it's 96.63%. The other way to look at it is that this increases the DPS difference between the Mage Hex Hunter Bow and its counterparts. From 2.5%, it's increased to 4.89% for the tier 90. From 1.2%, it's increased to 3.5% for the tier 92. And this makes it equivalent to a tier 97.3 guys which is pretty good not gonna lie if they bring this out it will make it much more useful and looking even further if we're pushing our luck and they increase it to 15 percent your hit chance requirements are dropped even further and looking at it from another angle your dps increase is even higher and the, the mage hex hunter bow would theoretically be a tier 100.7 bow so uh interesting stuff interesting stuff i don't know if they'll do it but they might 
And uh, the last two things I want to look at is if they make this bow's special effect applicable to Nex, it wouldn't be very useful. That's the verdict because your hit chance has no chance even with the best boosts, Reckless Aura, Nihil and Reaper Necklace, even with all those, you would have no chance of getting up to 100%. No chance at all or even the magical figure of 98.8%. So even if the boost did apply to Nex, you wouldn't use the Mage Hex into Bow because it's still not the best DPS. However, if they made it applicable to AOD, it would in fact be the best if you have someone using all these Affinity boosts. Your hit chance would be just over 100% and therefore your damage rating will be superior and therefore your total DPS will be superior as well. So if by any chance you're in a team where you have all these boosts and they decide to make the Mage Hex Center bows effect applicable to AOD, then it could actually become a bow to use there, especially after the nerf of continuous Fortic auto attacking, whenever that happens. So that's all I have for this video. It's been a very long video, but uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed the analysis. I hope you did as well. Hope you learned a lot from it. And in the next one, look forward to my Black Criminal Bolts analysis on the day of release. So that could potentially outclass the Hex Hunter bow. We're going to have to do some number crunching to figure that one out, but uh, it will be very interesting to see once that gets released and we have a look at the numbers. So I'm really excited for that, guys. Hope you enjoyed watching this one, and I will see you in the next one.